Kyoto Katara, please excuse any audio issues there as uh, we welcome you to English Park in Christchurch for coverage of this New Zealand Football Foundation Kate Shepherd Cup quarter-final clash between Kashmir Technical and Dunedin City Royals, two of the South Island's best teams in action, with today's winner earning the last Kate Shepherd Cup semi-final spot. Kashmir Technical, the home team today, in the yellow and blue strip, and there's a few familiar names who have uh, played alongside many of these Dunedin players in recent years and there's also some great experience in this lineup with the likes of Lee Alexander, Kate Loy and former Fern forward Amy Phillips and a youngster to watch there, number 10, Charlotte Mortlock who is extremely talented and one to watch in the middle of the park. They're facing a very strong Dunedin City Royals line up today and eight of these players having starred for Southern United in their National League South Central Series victory late last year. Defender Kelsey Kennard is making her 200th Premier Team appearance today. And plenty of experience in this lineup as well. This match was originally scheduled to be played at Garrick Memorial Park However, there's been a lot of rain in Christchurch over the last few days. So the match has been transferred to the turf here at English Park. But the good news is that the forecast is uh, much better now. Got the sun shining and very close to kick off here. Home team, Kashmir Technical, get things underway, playing from right to left. And it's an early win in the midfield there by Chantal Smith. And the Royals looking to put pressure on Kashmir Technical early on here. Although the Dunedin City Royals name is fairly new in name at least to many, it's a club that's only formed last year as an amalgamation of summers. Dunedin's oldest clubs, including Dunedin Technical and Cavisham. And there's some good pressure there from the Royals and look to get a cross in. Tony Power. There, and the Royals forced backwards, but nice turn in the middle of the park there by Emily Morrison, the striker, dropping deep. And Kashmir looking to try and get it clear. They break down the right flank now. And can't quite find Phillips, I think, there. But great challenge here. And won't quite amount to anything. And it goes all the way through to Emma Andrew, the young goalkeeper for the Royals. Uh, Dunedin Technical, the previous guys, I guess, of um, this Dunedin Royal, City Royals side dominated the local scene for the last decade and recently sealed a 10th consecutive Football South Premiership title. And, of course, Dunedin Technical won the inaugural catch of a cup of Chantel Smith who in that final in 2018 won the Maya Jackman Trophy comes back here but Tony Power can't quite keep that one in it's 
Cashmere now through Kate Loy, experienced midfielder there. And 33, Amy Phillips there up front is certainly going to be one to watch. But it's Diaz for the Royals. Rose Morton sends it out the left to room. Pushes forward from the back and may have won herself a corner there and has done. So an early chance for a set piece here for Dunedin City Royals and it will be the number seven, Chantel Smith. will go over there to take it. They have a couple of towering centre-backs and Kelsey Kennard and Hannah Mackay Wright will get themselves forward here. Corner swung in, dealt with at the near post. It'll be a chance for Smith to repeat the corner. Plenty of players attacking from deep here, and it's a high looping one. And the header comes in, and well saved by Kate Middleditch. Well, early chance there for the Royals with a looping corner coming in. And Middleditch doing well. Middleditch, who was the goalkeeper for Dunedin Technical in that 2018 Cup final. And a couple of other teammates in this Kashmir Technical side who had featured for Dunedin Tech as well, including defender Michaela Hunt, who scored a couple of goals in that final. So the Royals come on the attack again, and tab of the season there, just couldn't quite get that one under control. Good contest early on here. Really tough game to pick, really, in terms of who you might Picked to be the favourite as Kashmir Tech push forward, but well cut out and do want a free kick there. And a chance for them to send an attack as they build from the back. And some nice interplay here and Come down this left hand side and cutting inside. It's Mackay Wright. Can't quite get under control there from Diaz and Rose Morton trying to mop up, but Lottie Mortlock does well there. It's going to be a great contest today. Morton trying to shut down Mortlock. Another challenge coming in from Morton there. But Kate Loy sends it forward and not quite brought under control. And Diaz now dropping deep. Links up. Here's Morrison on the ball. S tries to find Whitaker down the left flank. And the offside flag has gone up as they look to counter. Whitaker, another hugely experienced player with more than 150 games for Dunedin Tech and the Dunedin City Royals. And I think she's already cracked the 20 goal mark this season across the league and cup matches so far. Morton battling away again. And Kennard did well to cut that out, but Loy sends it back to Hunt. <laughs> Loops it forward, and Royals will just about do enough there to mop up. Smith can only find her former teammate in Hunt. Once again, it's sent 
up long and I think that Phillips there looking dangerous and the Royal scramble it clear and they look to counter again. Chantel Smith drives forward and is clipped and Mortlock tracking back. Well, if she escapes without a card there, then, uh, and she won't, so it is an early yellow card, and that was a promising attack there for the Royals, but an early yellow card there for, I think it was Mortlock. <laughs> just as Smith was looking to drive forward. So perhaps still not a bad one to give away, but we'll be on a bit of a tightrope for the rest of the match. And a free kick chance now and again, it'll be Smith to send it forward. Let's go long and centrally and catch me a tick. Get it away. Awkward bouncing ball here on the English Park turf. And the sun might be a bit of a factor as well, but we might not have picked that given the weather we've had over the last few days. Hunt under pressure there. Good pressure from Seaton. But Loy shows her experience there to turn past Diaz. Loy again heavily involved in the middle of the park but can't find a teammate there and it's Whitaker now surging forward and Loy does well to win the ball back for Kashmir. And big challenges coming in in the middle of the park. First time these two teams have gone up against each other so again makes it hard to to pick who might be the favourite here. Kashmir Technical were hugely impressive with uh, their round three victory, uh, defeating last year's Cape Shepherd Cup semi finalist Coastal Spirit 1 0 to make it to this quarter final. There's uh, just an injury stoppage here. Might be Canard being attended to. Yeah, Kashmir Technical will finish in second place in the mainland Premier League. But it was a, a great win they had over their, their rivals, Coastal Spirit, to make it to this point in the competition. Meanwhile, the Royals have had victories over Dunedin sides, Green Island, Rosby Carey and Otago University to get to this point, scoring 13 goals and not conceding a goal. And in fact, have got a pretty astonishing record across both the league and cup. In those 13 matches they've played, they've only conceded one goal so far this season. <laughs> they've scored 93 They're just incredibly dominant down in the in the Football South Federation and once again they'll be uh, really focused on trying to make their mark on the national stage again in this Kate Shepherd Cup. So they look to build from inside their own half and Tony Power loses out there and Kashmir Technical now through Kate Guilford, another former Dunedin Technical player. Gets a shot away, but it's comfortable for Emma Andrew in goals. As Mackay Wright will get shut down there. Power sends throw down the line and Mortlock can only put it over the sideline for another Royals throw-in. 
Diaz with a sharp turn, but then loses control. Diaz with another chance here and finds Morrison who turns and lays it off. May have been Seaton there, sending it through. Then Middleditch had to come a long way out there, but did well to tidy up. Diaz would just about get in behind Hunt here, but Hunt showing her experience and does well, but only gets it as far as Morrison. And crosses in. Can't quite find a teammate. Milford there. Well, and catch me technical now down the right hand side. And it's Amy Phillips running at her opponent and Kennard and that might be a corner now for Kashmir Technical. So they'll have a set piece opportunity here. And Michaela Hunt will be one to watch for, though it's a short one. Kashmir Technical now looking to get it in, and it's a dangerous one, and it's gone in. And Kashmir Technical take the lead. It may have been Lily Fisher there, who has been the last player to poke that one in. We'll catch a replay here as the cross came in. And yeah, unmarked. And Kashmir Technical with an early lead. The 15th minute here. So, great start for the Christchurch side here, taking a 1-0 lead over the Dunedin City Royals. The Royals will be looking to bounce back. They played confidently early on, it's just that set-piece opportunity that eventually led to the Kashmir Technical opener. A shot comes in from distance, it's straight at middle ditch. Is the Royals come forward and Whitaker looks to take on her player, but great defending by the experienced Lee Alexander there. Now Mortlock goes up against Morton there. Chantel Smith heavily involved. And another nice turn there from Whitaker. Gets it to Seaton. <laughs> Royals again through Whitaker and then Room launching it across, but comfortable for the Kashmir technical goalkeeper again. Here's Kate Guilford looking to spark another attack here for Kashmir technical. Janelle Arthur in the 11 shirt.
I think it was Arthur who sent in the cross for that opening goal and believe that it was Lily Fisher, the number five, who was the scorer for Kashmir Technical. As Guilford battles away and sends it back to Loy. Lovely composure and then looks promising here with Phillips slaying it off and Guilford sending it out to the right. Room does well. Mortlock so dangerous with the ball at her feet and again it's Morton who looks like she's been tasked with dealing with that. Loy from distance. It's a pretty good connection, but once again, straight at Emma Andrew. Smith dropping deep and with Hannah Mackay right. And Smith had to be alert there at Loy again. Heavily involved, and then Mortlock in the right-hand flank, but can't quite link up with, I think, Ella McKay down that right flank there. Kennard and Whitaker and Room linking up as the Royals try and play it out, but can see to throw in. Sure, around 20 minutes into this Kate Shepherd Cup quarter final clash. Coming to you from English Park in Christchurch. Kashmir Technical in the yellow and blue. Up against the Dunedin City Royals in the dark kit. Again, if you missed earlier that uh, the match was originally scheduled to be played at Kashmir Technical's Garrick Memorial Park, but huge amount of rain in Christchurch over the last few days led to the match being transferred here to English Park and of course the Royals as uh, they try and build up another attack. The Royals very familiar to playing on an artificial pitch with uh, playing most of their matches locally at the wonderful artificial turf facility at Logan Park in Dunedin. Slightly different surface to this one here at English Park, but their style of football definitely lends itself to a nice uh, flat turf surface as they look to attack, but well cut out there by the goal scorer, Lily Fisher. Yesterday we saw the other three semi-finalists confirmed as Morrison looks to get it into the Kashmir penalty area, but home team do enough to get the ball away. The three teams confirmed, Palmerston North Marist, Northern Rovers and Auckland United all confirming semi-final spots. The winner of this fixture will join them in the semi-finals. Yes, Mackay Wright does well, turning under pressure from Phillips. But Phillips did well to just back on the ball now and linking up with maybe Claudia Wilson there in the 13 shirt. I hope I've got that right. I um, don't know if she was in my original starting lineup listing, but. Diaz linking up with Mackay Wright, who goes long. 
And Seaton looks to turn, but was under a lot of pressure from Fisher. And Chantel Smith battling away there and doing well. And gets the ball in and just put out in. And then the shot comes in. And there's your equaliser. Margie Diaz equalising for the Dunedin City Royals. One all. Well, Chantel Smith did so well here and sent it in. And may have been the crossbar that was struck there. And Middleditch couldn't do much. And Diaz, very alert. Tucked it away. Mentioned earlier, she's been scoring plenty of goals. I think she's got 13 in the league and five already in the in the cup. Actually, she scored a hat trick in the round one win over Green Island. There's another goal in the following two wins over Autumn Waikari and Otago Uni. But what a match we've got here! One all. <laughs> it's been a great battle so far, and Ashmi Technical looking to strike back again. And once again, it's a comfortable one for Emma Andrew. <laughs> Kayla Hunt, who yeah, playing for Dunedin Technical, scored two booming headers in the 2018 Kate Shepherd Cup final up at North Harbour Stadium. Diaz, the goal scorer, links up with power, but it's me technical. Win it back. Happy to go back with. Kate Loy going all the way back to her goalkeeper, Middleditch. Loy again, so much composure as she tries to play a 1 2 with Mortlock, but the Royals turn it over and Diaz, she's, well, if anyone was quick enough to keep that in, it would have been her, but couldn't quite do so. Mortlock very deep and tries to link up with uh, might be Guy, but nicely cut out here by Morton. What a great tussle we're seeing here. And Amy Phillips out on this left flank and will try and cut inside and does well. Such a dangerous dribbler. The Royals just do enough to scramble it away without conceding a free kick, but Phillips showing all her experience and, and talent there. She's had, I think, eight, eight caps for the Senior Ferns and a recent re-signing in the region here after having uh, been playing most recently for Sydney Olympic. And Kashmir Technical now with uh, another chance for a corner. Once again, look for the likes of Fisher and Hunt to get on the end of this. It's sent in, but dealt with at the near post by Smith. Loy, once again, lovely composure, and Guilford with another shot on target. But once again, Andrew will be relieved that it's a comfortable one to deal with. Both teams looking to put a lot of pressure on, on each other with pressing. As Room drives down the left flank and links up with Whitaker, who I think was just offside again.
As we're closing in on the half hour mark here at English Park in this Kate Shepherd Cup quarter final. Scores locked up at one apiece between Kashmir Technical in the yellow and blue and the Royals in the dark kit. Kashmir Technical took an early lead in around the 15 minute mark through Lily Fisher converting from very close range after Janelle Arthur did well. But the lead only lasted for about nine minutes before Margie Diaz equalised for the Dunedin City Royals. Seaton who's been impressive. Her midfield counterpart there, Smith. Morrison drops deep with the ball at her feet and linked up with Power who drives down the right hand flank but easily cut out by Loy. She's been everywhere so far. And here she is again driving onto the ball. But Morrison did well dropping deep as just have a wee stoppage and play with Chantelle Smith down. Referee Courtney Bremner attending to Smith. Hopefully nothing too serious there. They don't come much tougher than Chantel Smith. A referee, Courtney Bremner. I think she's refereed all of Kashmir Technical's three cup fixtures so far this year. As we restart with Mortlock sending it back to Hunt. Fisher, the goal scorer. Goes all the way through and Andrew will claim that. She'll go long this time. And it's Loy again, so heavily involved. As is Guilford. But she can't quite link up with Ella Mackay down that right hand side. Rose Morton, Whitaker. So dangerous with the ball at her feet, like a, a few of the players on display here. Half an hour gone here at English Park. Emily Morrison for the Royals. And once again, cut out by Loy. How many intercepts has she made already? And it's Guilford driving forward, but nicely cut out at the back there by Hannah Mackay Wright. A little bit of space now for Chantelle Smith to look up and be a wee bit disappointing there that she couldn't uh, quite link up with one of her teammates, but still putting the pressure on here, the Royals. Morton, like a number of players here, someone who's... Uh, had international experience and age age group experience with uh, New Zealand sides. Nicely composed there from Canard linking up with Smith who turns. And she's got a couple of options in front and Diaz cuts inside and all oh, tried to put a little through ball through to well Morrison I think who just wasn't quite on the same wavelength. Could have been dangerous there. There's Loy that's a little bit sloppy this time and Diaz just about won the ball back but Loy recovered. <laughs> Mackay sees a few Royals players close it on her and Whitaker and well wanted it back from Morrison there just couldn't quite get the through ball back. And Janelle Arthur looks to mop up. Fisher only sends it as far as Whitaker. Just uh, not quite dealing with uh, the, the clearances there, Kashmir Technical, but they'll be relieved to be able to restart with a, a goal kick. I think 
both of these clubs had their, their men's teams advance to Chatham Cup quarterfinals yesterday. The Kashmir Technical men's side with a massive 9 0 win over Dunedin side Green Island yesterday. Of course, Kashmir Technical won the 2021 Chatham Cup with the final played, I think it was in March this year actually, after the COVID disruptions. The 4 2 win in that final over Miramar. As uh, Morton will look to tidy up here for the Royals. Meanwhile, the, the Royals men's team had a good 3 1 win over Nelson Suburbs yesterday as well. It's a throw in here for Michaela Hunt. But uh, Guilford can only send that for a goal kick. So both of these uh, clubs, I guess, showing the the recent trend of uh, older clubs uh, merging and amalgamating, but it's worked out pretty well for Kashmir Technical since uh, they had Kashmir Wanderers and Morston Technical merge in 2012. I think they're probably the largest club in the in the South Island. I think they've got around 1,400 players across the, the entire club. And the Royals certainly a big club now as Whitaker can't quite keep that in. The Royals being a, a merger of, well, a couple of the biggest rivals in New Zealand football really over the last few decades with uh, Dunedin Technical and Cavisham and also Melchester Rovers and Hirawaka a couple of uh, strong junior clubs all joining together under the Dunedin City Royals banner as Diaz oh, does well there to take it from Kate Loy and another strong tackle there as Alan Mackay and Phillips will latch on to that. Electric pace and gets a cross in. Could be a dangerous one. Guilford was in a promising position and laid off. And whoa. Good effort there, but not quite on target. I think it was Mortlock there. Firing that in from long range. Been an entertaining match so far as we're into around the final 10 minutes of this first half. Scores locked at one all. There's room under pressure there from Mackay who does well and room recovers and does well to link up with Whitaker. Now Arthur on the ball here, but it's easily cut out by Mackay Wright, who does such a good job of coming out of the defensive line to make those kinds of interceptions. Seeing some great battles out there so far, and well, Mackay Wright, I think it was again, cutting that one out and sparking a counter-attack through Chantel Smith. Has Diaz going down the right flank. And... Well, Michaela Hunt's done a great job of closing down her former teammate there. Smith is uh, so dangerous in those kind of situations. And I've seen her score some crackers from distance over the years as well. And look at the pace here from Guilford. Just gets on the ball. Kennard does a good job of shutting it down, and along with Diaz. Now, yeah, Mackay Wright with a little bit of time to look up and goes long. Nice composure there from Michaela Hunt. And then once again with a nice turn to beat Diaz. It's been a pretty frenetic 
half of football so far. Mortlock with a bit of space now. We haven't really seen her with too many chances to turn and run. And that's a lovely ball that she plays through to Arthur, who has a crack from downtown. But once again, easy for Andrew. But Janelle Arthur's certainly looking dangerous. She scored a few goals this season, including three in the, in the cup so far. Loy, that's easily cut out by Chantel Smith. And he looks up and look at that. Oh, and well, was that a shot? Because uh, just didn't have any support, but didn't make uh, any kind of connection with that. Like we know, she's uh, well and truly capable of. But yeah, that. Chantel Smith and Kate Lewis, great battle in the middle of the park. Morton and Mortlock's been another good battle. And there's certainly uh, a lot of pace and attacking threat from, from both teams. There's a bit of a tussle there, but Whitaker. No one can turn on a ball better than, than her, and she does well to look up and find room who's advancing and looks up. She has Diaz in the six yard box, but no one else in support, unfortunately, for the Dunedin City Royals. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. you were the striker, of course. I have Middle ditch takes a short option there to find Hunt. Oh, there's a lot of composure there as they look to play out, but look at the number of Royals players there to try and close that down. And Seaton can't quite link up with a teammate. Diaz won't die wondering, and Middle ditch does well. Got a space now for Mackay down that right flank and links up with Phillips. Canard, oh, does well because uh, it's quite isolated there one on one with Amy Phillips, but did a great job. Oh, it's a bit of a clunky clearance though, and Power and Dares do well, but Hunt to Guilford and Mackay Wright does well. Always uh, seems to be wanting to try and link up with, with Morrison, who's so good at holding the ball up. And now Smith in a bit of space. Quickly closed down by Loy and Fisher. But look at the confidence from Smith linking up with Diaz. And will Smith be able to get on the end of that? She will. Gets a low cross in, but comfortable enough for the Kashmir technical goalkeeper there. <laughs> Phillips under pressure from at least three dark shirts there. Now, once again driving forward and links up with Guilford, I think, out that right-hand flank, and Phillips in a dangerous spot, but, oh, let the ball just run across her, and I think it might have been Tony Power actually coming across centrally to shut that one down. Cashmere Technical playing with a bit of confidence at the moment, and once again, Arthur with a long-range effort, but that one's dragged well wide a goal. Certainly had a few more shots than the visitors so far, but keepers haven't really been forced into too many saves yet. Um, other than the, the, the goals that we saw that were well taken. Room loses out there to Fisher. The offside flag goes up against Kashmir Technical. Yeah, 
Cashmere with Kate Shepherd Cup wins over Christchurch United, Nomads and Coastal Spirit so far. That round one win over Christchurch United, who are a, a, a Championship League side of division below Cashmere Technical. And Cashmere got, well, more than a fright in that game. They eventually won 7 4 after extra time, after Christchurch United led 4 2 at half time. Then they had a good 5-0 win over Nomads in round two, and then that impressive 1-0 win over great rivals Coastal Spirit. In round three, it was a very late penalty to Kate Loy that was the decider in that match. As Rose Morton sends it out the left flank, and Room will look to actually just tries to play a 1-2 with Whitaker. And could be caught a wee bit short at the back here if it's not closed down and Cashmere Technical drive forward down the left hand flank here through Wilson. Loy and Hunt combining again with that composure but Smith Gets in and Morrison trying to put a bit of pressure on Fisher at the back there. As we get close to the half time break here. Be a great time for either score to, uh, for either team to find a second goal. It's the Royals now through Diaz. Links up with Morrison, but Fisher did a good job of at least uh, closing her down. There's some great tussles in the middle of the park again there, but comes out left, and I think it's room there with, a, fortunately, just a bit of a heavy touch. Middleditch was able to, uh, to deal with it. Both teams playing positive and enterprising football here. Alexander sends it forward, but Mackay Wright can get it clear, but they'll have another chance to attack late in this first half. Morrison and Seaton linking up, and Smith on the ball turns. We'll try and link up with Diaz, but, well, great positioning there from Michaela Hunt. Been a great half of football. Great skill on display from both teams. And Kate Loy, experienced midfielder who's been so heavily involved. And look at that, heaps of space here for the 13 for Cashmere Technical, Wilson, and can't link up with Guilford who is surging forward. Maybe one final chance to try and break the deadlock here before the halftime break. Guilford links up with Loy. Once again, look at that composure. And fires it across. Oh, it's a clever effort from, I think it was Guilford there, but couldn't quite get it on target. And well, that sees the half time whistle go here at English Park in this Kate Shepherd Cup quarter final match. Kashmir Technical and Dunedin City Royals locked at one apiece. It was Kashmir Technical who took the lead after 15 minutes through Lily Fisher knocking it in from close range after a uh, Janelle Arthur cross <laughs> but that lead only lasted for around nine minutes before Margie Diaz equalised for the Dunedin City Royals so gee, it's going to be a great second half here as well could be anyone's game this so don't go far make yourself a cuppa and we'll be back very soon with second half action here from English Park.
there, don't prove it.
Kia ora, welcome back to English Park in Christchurch for the second half of this uh, Kate Shepherd Cup quarterfinal clash between Kashmir Technical in the yellow and Dunedin City Royals in the dark kit and seeing a replay here of the goals and the opening goal tucked in from close range by Kashmir's Lily Fisher but equaliser after Chantel Smith fired it in and Diaz, what a finish. Leaving Middle Ditch no chance, so the score's <laughs> locked at one apiece. Are you a side to side player? Yeah, I'm probably not. Anyone's play game play. here <laughs> as we're close to getting the second half underway. We found our first three semi finalists yesterday with Palmerston North Marist, Northern Rovers, and Auckland United all sealing spots in the last four. Who's going to join them? Will it be Kashmir Tech or will it be the Dunedin City Royals? Try and see if there's any half-time changes. Bit of depth on the Kashmir Tech bench with uh, I think they've got at least five subs named. The Royals a wee bit lighter on numbers with just three, but It's going to be the Royals to get the second half underway. Very cold conditions in Christchurch. Smith sends it forward. Whitaker will chase after and puts a bit of pressure on. So Devin Smith in the two shirt there who is a substitution at the break. Smith uh, linking up with the goal scorer Diaz. And we saw lots of good tussles in that first half and we'll see plenty more I think in the second and Morton coming forward and linking up with Season. He gets it to the feet of Whitaker and Morrison links up with Whitaker. Oh, it was intricate play. Well, Middleditch did well to shut it down and Cashmere will now get it clear, but early encouraging signs there in the second half here for the Royals. And once again, Whitaker turning and getting a shot, but easy for Middleditch. So there's a bit of intent from the Royals to try and find a second goal here. Seaton does well to link up with Room. Morrison tries to flick it out to Whitaker, but can't do so. Lee Alexander, some nice composure. It's cut out. Here by Talia Room, and she's gone down with a bit of a knock. Looks in a bit of pain here. As so we get a break early in this second half. Just th yeah, just three names on the on the bench for the Royals with uh, a couple of youngsters and Freya Partridge Moore and Maya Robinson and a more experienced name in Una Madden. It's one of the assistant coaches here to head coach Graham Smale, along with uh, Richard Smith. Madden, a bit of a <laughs> bit of a legend locally for uh, her exploits with Ros and Carey over the last couple of decades down in Dunedin. And made an appearance, I think it may have been in one of the earlier cup rounds, it might have been, even been against Ros and Carey where she appeared in goals for the Royals. Good news here for the Royals is that Room looks like she'll be okay to continue, so 
play will get back underway here. Still getting a wee bit of attention there, but looks like she'll be able to get back out on, onto the pitch when the referee Courtney Bremner allows it. A oh, good tussle there, Arthur. Parking in for the back of Beaton and the referee allowing it to continue. There are a couple of uh, bumps in the back there, but it's been a good physical game. And then uh, see whether Arthur may have ended up winning a free kick herself. So it's been a physical start to the second half here. And Kashmir Tet will look to extend it in through Alexander. Smith under a bit of pressure there. Lloyd tries to link up with Claudia Wilson but can't do so. Kelsey Kennard in her 200th senior match. I think it's her 11th season with, well, Dunedin Technical and then now the Dunedin City Royals and been playing in the in the top side since the age of 14, I think. It's been a wonderful performer for a long time. There's Emma Andrew. Gets play back underway and... Arthur heavily involved at the start of the second half for uh, Kashmir Tech. <laughs> Whitaker looks to spark something for the Royals. Links up with Morton who turns under pressure. Good composure there and finds Mackay Wright. Once again, always looking for, for Morrison, who always makes herself available. And here is Morrison, again dropping deep. Oh, and sends it through, and well, Whitaker thought she might have beaten the offside trap on this occasion, but the flag did go up. But it's a great link up play. So many great combinations of players that have played together for a number of seasons now in this Royals lineup. As I mentioned earlier, they've scored a remarkable 93 goals across the uh, league and cup fixtures so far this season and conceded well before today it was only one Mortlock and Phillips look at the tight marking there from Canard who does well although the ball's kept in Quite right, just under a bit of pressure here from Guildford. Kai Wright will probably be happy just to see this over the line, I think, and gets there eventually. Arthur under pressure from Seaton. Does what a corner. Both teams had a couple of corners in that first half. Tried keeping a wee tally of the sh shots on goal as well and had Kashmir Tech with about nine shots. The Royals with five. Although most of the efforts from both teams were fairly comfortable for the goalkeepers. <laughs> Big tussle there. K 
Kate Loy takes the throw in and Mortlock will see her side win another corner here. Mortlock picked up a yellow card early in that first half for disrupting a promising counter-attack for the Royals. Don't see too many cards in uh, women's football. Don't think Dunedin Tech have had one all, all season. Oh, sorry, the Dunedin City Royals. Well, he did clear there, but Mortlock bumps it in, and oh, I think it's a brilliant save by Emma Andrew to deny Mortlock. It was a great effort on goal. And Andrew is at full stretch as we see the replay. The header came out, Mortlock. Great connection, and yeah, Andrew. That's the the first really big save I think that we've that we've seen. And the repeat corners harmless. Well, Mortlock was uh, perhaps a little bit quiet in that first half, but showing her ability with that effort on goal. And it needed a great save from the young Royals goalkeeper. Who I believe Emma Andrews even spent some time training with some of the Kashmir Tech squad up in, up in Christchurch in recent times. So probably knows a lot of them very well. Nice turn from Arthur. Kashmir Tech with a, a good wee spell here, although Diaz looking to heap a bit of pressure on. Morton turning in the middle of the park, linking up with power, always making herself available and surges forward to link up with Diaz. Are a great combination for Southern United in the, in the National League and in the South Central Series that of course Southern United won in impressive style in late 2021. with uh, at least eight of today's Royal side featuring for Southern United and of course that was under the head coach today as well, Graham Smale. He's just been so successful over the last decade. Chantelle Smith linking up with Whitaker. She'll take on her marker and Smith and wins herself a corner. I personally thought that uh, the last touch may have been off Whitaker, but the Royals won't be complaining as Smith comes across to take the corner. Very short this time. Whitaker knocks it back to Smith to now send it in. Smith wins it back again, has a crack from distance and oh just about falls for Mackay Wright and may have been offside. Just about a fortuitous deflection there. But the Christchurch side escapes. A bit of pressure there and very cool from little dipped in goals. Great composure. Lily Fisher, the goal scorer, sends it across to fellow defender and Hunt. And there's some good pressure once again from the Royals. But
This time just whacked clear by Alexander. So we're closing in on the hour mark here at English Park in this Kate Shepherd Cup quarter final between Kashmir Tech and the gold and blue, yellow and blue, and visitors Dunedin City Royals. Kilford links up with Arthur. <laughs> Tackled firmly by Chantel Smith. Right on the halfway mark there. And Hunt will look to send it forward for Kashmir Tech here. Power and Whitaker link up there. Now Mortlock, nice ball across to Loy. Mackay Wright once again does a great job cutting it out. Morton looks to unleash Diaz one on one with Hunt who just does enough. Mortlock nicely closed down again by Morton who's done a good job of that throughout most of the match. Alexander in the 17 shirt, hugely experienced player, more than 150 matches for Kashmir Tech. Back playing for them after a few years over in Australia. Nicely cut out again by Morton. Whitaker gets onto that but can't find Morrison. He'll get another chance here though, the Royals. And Whitaker, well, once again, can't quite get that one under control. Loy sends it down the right flank. Don't think Smith will quite get on the end of that. So we've passed the hour mark, and it's like a substitution here. Kashmir Tech with the change. The play will get underway now. Smith under pressure from her namesake on another big strong challenge there. Loy who's uh, controlled a lot of play for the for the home team and does well here and substitute Lisa Evans in the sixth shirt there. And quite topsy-turvy with each team having their own wee period to play where they've dominated a lot of possession and in territory and at the moment Kashmir Technical with a nice spell and Loy does well to link up and gets a shot that Emma Andrew has to get down low to and does well. Mackay Wright does well to knock it to Diaz and Smith will Latch onto this Chantel Smith and it's a shot from distance which he's always going to uh, have an eye at having a crack at goal. Seen her score some absolute screamers from that kind of distance.
Tony Power, the fullback for the Royals, but can't quite link up with Diaz and Hunt under no pressure can go all the way back to a goalkeeper. And Alexander will turn Fisher. Arthur couldn't quite find Loy and a chance now for the Royals to counter. Got plenty of players forward. Morton sends it across to Room. Link up with Whitaker. And nice overlap here with Room continuing with her run. Gets a low cross into the penalty area, but Alexander did enough there. Kashmir have done a pretty good job of closing down Chelsea Whitaker down this left wing position and catching her offside on a couple of occasions, but she's a, a huge goal scoring threat, and here she is on the ball now for the Royals. Looks up and sends it into the box. I imagine that Chelsea's family will be watching this all the way over in uh, Rarotonga. So uh, brilliant to be able to stream these matches to people across the country and around the world. I'm sure there's plenty of people down in Dunedin watching this as well. Kashmir Tech come out this right hand side and it's a substitute Lisa Evans but Kennard did a good job of closing it down it will be a corner though and could it be a, a set piece that decides this match is been such a tight affair so far. Scores locked, one apiece. And Kennard looks to scramble that one clear. Arthur, under pressure from Morrison, who slides in and does well. And John Town Smith latches onto it. He looks up and has some teammates surging forward as they look to counter. And Diaz, under pressure from Guildford. Oh, and. Kashmir Tech will be pleased that they shut that down. As Mackay Wright gets a tricky one to deal with here under pressure from Evans, who's been lively since coming on. But Mackay Wright, good composure. Second half's flying by. We're Chantel Smith <laughs> sliding in there on former teammate Guilford, but Emily Morrison still down on the on the turf. It's been a physical battle so far between these two teams, but plenty of skill and attacking intent on display from both teams. It's what's been the best thing about the match so far, I think. And Whitaker looks to take on her marker this time. And Alexander, who's showing all her experience and just trying to slow down Chelsea Whitaker. But she gets a little low ball across towards the near post. And Diaz was trying to get onto the end of it. Just a quick restart for Kashmir. Hunt finds Devin Smith. She links up with Mortlock, who's a tricky with the ball at her feet and clever ball out towards Smith, but she just couldn't quite get on the end of that.
So we're closing in on the 70 minute mark here at English Park. Kashmir Technical 1, Dunedin City Royals 1. Contel Smith coming deep and under pressure from Arthur. And there's some good pressure there from Kashmir. Mortlock <laughs> once again Morton right on her back and did well to win the ball back for the Royals we haven't really seen Mortlock be able to turn into uh, an attack space like she so often does and that's a credit mainly to the job that Rose Morton has done and shutting her down throughout the match so far. Amy Phillips showed, um, showed some moments of uh, attacking threat as I think the offside flag goes up there. Amy Phillips looked dangerous early in the first half but she's also been fairly well closed down for much of the match as well. Uh, both teams super impressive in the way that they've closed down the attacking threats. As Arthur might lose out and once again Morton just doing such a good job of closing down her opponent. Morrison all oh, had teammates driving forward but couldn't quite link up with them. Everything just gets a little bit more tense as each minute goes past. And a cracker of a match so far in this Kate Shepherd Cup quarterfinal. Morrison tries to link up with Whitaker and gets another chance, but again, cut out by Kate Lloyd. Look at that lovely turn. And Mortlock now with a bit of space, but Morton once again in close attendance. And a free kick, Seaton knocking over Lily Fraser. As we often see in these matches, you almost get, a, get an apology for conceding a foul. And Hunt, well, almost got in the way of each other there, Hunt and, and Arthur, because Hunt had done such a good job. And now it's Chantel Smith for the Royals looking up. Sending it long, and can Morrison get on the end of that? Middleditch does well to be alert and beating her opponent to the ball. Alexander looks up. Wonder if tired legs will start to play their part in this match, especially for the Royals who don't quite have the same depth in the bench and that that we see for Kashmir Technical. We've made a couple of subs that a couple of players that have made an impact since they've come on and Smith and Evans. And here's Whitaker turning a bit of space. Morrison trying to win the ball back but Mortlock doing a good job there. Starting to feel a wee bit cagey this match. Both teams knowing that might only be one more goal to decide it. Desperate not to concede and yet both teams still desperate to play positive attacking football and Loy looks up and tries to find Guilford. She's under pressure from Tony Power. Does well though to find Arthur. And can she get it across to Mortlock? She can. Once again, Morton's almost least to her, but Mortlock with a nice turn and oh! Opened up with shot at goal, and I think it was Pinard who blocked that. I wondered if there might have almost been a handball in that, but it was from such close range. But that was a bit more threatening from Mortlock, who finally found a little bit of space. Here she is again. Seaton this time does a good job of forcing her back. 
And, oh, Morton closing down. Their opponent there again. Seaton with a nice ball through to room who's always keen to get forward and tries to find Morrison right through the middle. Well cut out though. Morrison does get onto it. Chantel Smith sends it across to Power. Seaton gives it straight to uh, Alexander though. Mortlock. She's got Smith on her back this time and sliding in. Loy sending it forward for Evans. And, well, Kennard and Andrew combining well enough here. Cool play from Kennard, the experienced defender. Diaz. Hasn't seen quite so much of the ball in the last wee period. Smith looks for another winger. And, well, in fact, it's been a Talia room driving forward in acres of space. Has she got some support? She sends it towards goal and into the side netting. Didn't quite have the support she wanted from her teammates there. But again, encouraging and positive play driving forward. So we see Mortlock's effort here. Blocked by Kennard at close range, and then down the other end, Room driving it into only the side netting. A relieved middle ditch. Arthur loses out to Smith, and well, again, Morrison and Smith almost getting in each other's way. Seaton has a shot from distance. Quite right, battling away there. <laughs> and Whitaker lays it back to Smith. She's really orchestrating things now for the Royals and Diaz, well, loops it over, but not towards her teammate. Mortlock, who's just covers every yard of the pitch. Finds Smith. But again, it's her namesake who closes her down. Alexander to Mortlock. Forced to go all the way back to Jade Middleditch and goals. And along with Michaela Hunt, a couple of former Dunedin technical players who starred in the Kate Shepherd Cup final win for Dunedin Technical in 2018. We've also got Lara Wall on the bench for Kashmir Technical, another player who scored in that final, actually a, a wonder goal. Running from halfway, beating a couple of players and smashing in a right-footed shot. I remember that goal well. Loy lumps it forward and Phillips lays it back and Guilford's always uh, a willing runner but it was dealt with by the Royals. Guilford, a long throw, Evans flicks it on but it'll just be a goal kick for the Dunedin City Royals. Closing in on the last 10 minutes or so of this Kate Shepherd Cup quarterfinal. Still anyone's game. Hope you haven't got plans in a hurry because there's every chance that this could be going to, to extra time. 
But Amy Phillips now looks up, takes on Mackay Wright. Does well and wins herself a corner, I think. Does win a corner for Tech. Had a few corners in the second half. It's Janelle Arthur who will take this. It's a looping one and oh, Emma Andrew couldn't get to it initially but is relieved to be able to pounce on the ball. Chelsea Whitaker looks up again, room down the left flank but Mortlock does well to see that out. Some of these players have just covered every blade of artificial grass here at English Park. Kate Law has been huge for the home team. And just about falls there for Evans. But the Royals look to send it down the right flank. But haven't got anyone getting on the end of that one. Alexander finds Mortlock under pressure from Seaton. Fisher and Hunt combining there. And now Loy, the left-footed drive forward. But it's a little bit hopeful, that one. Morton finds Whitaker, but just doesn't quite make the connection she wants to try and find her striker in Morrison. Loy with another composed touch. Arthur looks up, had some teammates in support, but was well closed down. Whitaker all the way back, helping out her defence. inside the final 10 minutes here at English Park. Scores currently locked at one apiece. Mortlock takes a quick throw in here as Phillips now tries to win the ball off the towering defender Kennard but can't do so and the counter here from the Royals. Chantel Smith has Diaz racing forward. She only had Morrison in support and there were quite a few yellow shirts getting back there at Smith now with another chance. Tries to feed it through to Whitaker, but once again cut out. Players are giving it everything out there and look at this, Cody Power sends it forward, finds Diaz. Oh, sliding tackle coming in there from Lily Fisher. It could have been dangerous, but dealt with it okay. What a battle. And Cross coming in. It's almost like a boxing match at this stage. Whitaker sends it across Morrison. Couldn't quite get on that. Tony Power again. Just a burst of energy she showed before. And she's once again trying to make herself available there. Both teams desperately trying to find... A second goal here to break the deadlock. Diaz now lumps it across, but it's easy for Middleditch. It's been locked at one apiece since around the 24-minute mark. As Mortlock tries to get on the end of her own wee back there, couldn't quite do so. Loy. Sends it across to Guilford. 
That's a bit sloppy though, and Chantel Smith will cut that one out. Under pressure from Arthur. They've had a good battle. It was defender Lily Fisher who opened the scoring for Kashmir Tech in around the 15th minute from close range after some nice work by Janelle Arthur. But nine minutes later, Margie Diaz equalised for the Royals with a great finish after some nice work from Chantel Smith. And here's Mortlock with a bit of space and driving forward, trying to link up with her teammates. That's the kind of driving play that we're used to seeing from Lottie Mortlock. Whitaker again trying to link up with Morrison. Great defending though. Morton strong in the tackle. Amy Phillips with a little bit of space looks up and has Evans, but look at that. Hannah Mackay right reading the play so well, but then just about getting herself into trouble and finds herself up against two Kashmir Tech players and somehow does enough to get herself out of trouble. Wonderful defending from Hannah Mackay right but the way that she read that initial interception was, was wonderful. Morrison trying to link up with Seaton, I think. Really slugging it out at the moment, these two teams. Morrison coming deep, turns, looks up, but can't find Diaz, who just wasn't given any space by Guilford. Morrison again, working hard there. And Kashmir Tech might have done a great job of shutting down. Whitaker for most of this match so far. As, as I mentioned earlier, she's already bagged 20 goals this season, with 18 league goals and nine matches, and a couple in the cup round so far. We're at about the point in the match where. Kashmir Technical found their winner against great rivals Coastal Spirit in the previous round. It was a 87th minute penalty converted by Kate Loy that was the decider in that match. Are we going to see that kind of drama later on here at English Park? Can someone provide that moment of magic that'll make the difference? Here's Whitaker with Loy doing good job of closing her down, but great turn from Whitaker, and it's Morton getting herself a wee way forward there. Seaton has power making herself available, but nicely cut out by Kate Guilford, and Kashmir Tech now looking to counter. Bit of space for Seaton to turn and looks up. Can Morrison get on the end of that? Well, it's been read very well by Leah Alexander showing all her experience again. Just minutes remaining here and the 90 minutes of this Kate Shepherd Cup quarterfinal clash. Rowan here for the Dunedin City Royals. Power looking for a teammate to link up with and Morrison's always making herself available and tries to latch on the end of that. Can't quite do so. Well defended. Be a goal kick here for Kashmir Tech. We've already got Palmerston North Marist, Northern Rovers and Auckland United confirmed as semi-finalists in the Kate Shepherd Cup. Who's going to grab the final spot? Oh 
Chantel Smith links up with Whitaker Morrison. Trying to unlock this Kashmir Tech defense have done an admirable, admirable job of uh, closing down some of these talented attackers for the Royals. But Tony Power comes forward, gets the ball into the six yard box, but Middle Ditch who hasn't really had to make too many big saves as such, but has always had to be alert to those kind of balls. Talia Room now takes on a players and Whitaker tries to get it back to her teammate. She'll get another chance, Whitaker. Find Morton and Power with acres of space in front of her. And links up with Morrison and clever ball through for Seaton, but well cut out, may have been Gray. Ah, uh, Hunt, sorry. Oh, it could have been a tricky one there for Middle Ditch, but again, alert to it. Morton, well cut out by Smith, the substitute. Morrison, oh, can't quite. One dares, but she does well to put pressure on Hunt. Whitaker again has the overlapping run from Room. A low cross into the six yard box. That's good play from Jade Middleditch there to close that one down. As we're into stoppage time here, is there going to be one more chance in regular time? Goes forward. Catch me a tech, but Mackay Wright. It's been wonderful today in defence for the Royals. Morrison and Seaton. Is there one last chance here for the Royals? It's a bit of a disappointing ball and Devin Smith should be able to deal with that. Nice turn and plenty of time now for Room to look up. Gets a cross in towards the near post. Oh, might have been Arthur there who was in the right place to be able to deal with that cross. Whitaker. What can she do here? She takes on her players. Yeah, beats a couple. Looks up. Here's a cricket goal. And sends it just over the far post. Oh. And you can see the frustration. She knew that was a great chance with essentially the yeah, final kick of the normal 90 minutes. And there we go, the full time whistle goes. Scores still locked at one apiece. And we're headed to extra time. So, 90 minutes up here at English Park. One apiece between Kashmir Technical and Dunedin City Royals in this Kate Shepherd Cup quarter final. Hope you haven't got any plans to get anywhere in a hurry because you need to stick around because we'll very soon be getting extra time underway here. What a match it's been so far. Been a very even affair. Kashmir Technical took a lead after 15 minutes through Lily Fisher. The Royals equalised a few minutes later through Margie Diaz. It's been one all since around the 24 minute mark of this match. Both teams been desperately trying to uh, attack, but it's, it's, it's been the defence of both teams that's been hugely impressive. And you can see the coaches, Graham Smale for the Royals and Shane Verma for Kashmir Technical talking to their teams trying to drive them on for, geez, there'll be some tired legs out there from both teams especially the, the Royals, I'm not sure they've made any substitutions yet and both teams have really been giving it everything out there today 
Meanwhile, Kashmir Tech have made a couple of substitutions with the likes of uh, Lisa Evans and Devon Smith coming on and their fresh legs have made a bit of an impact. We should only be a couple of minutes away from extra time commencing here. I said pre-match that it seemed like this uh, would be a really tough match to pick this one. Two top quality teams and it's been such an even affair throughout as the teams have traded blows. I think I mentioned earlier, it's starting to feel a bit like a boxing match with both teams slugging it out in the late rounds. And it has been a physical contest at times. Both teams giving it their all. Both teams be desperate to try and seal this final Cape Shepherd Cup semi-final spot. Dunedin City Royals comprised uh, primarily of, of, of players that starred for Dunedin Tech in winning the 2018 Cape Shepherd Cup final in such brilliant fashion. And of course, a few of their players on that day are now playing up against them today for Kashmir Technical. And Kashmir Tech, well, they'll be uh, really uh, keen to continue on in this uh, competition. They're Finished second in the mainland women's Premier League behind Coastal Spirit, but of course Kashmir Tech defeated Coastal Spirit in the previous round of the Cape Shepherd Cup. Understand that both of these teams will be in the the uh, South Island Premier League that will soon be commencing and I think it'll be Coastal Spirit and Ros and Carey I think have sealed the fourth spot in that South Island League so this is a, a great indication of the great contest that we should see in that South Island League great to see the best teams in the South Island going up against each other more regularly than what we've probably seen in recent years. And I feel like whoever is the eventual winner of this match will really fancy their chances at um, having a shot at the Cape Shepherd Cup this year. Other teams in the semi-finals, Palmerston North Marist, Northern Rovers and Auckland United We're very close to getting extra time underway here. Kashmir Technical in the yellow and blue playing from right to left in the Dunedin City Royals. The visitors will get extra time underway here playing from left to right. Chantel Smith looks up and they dealt with and once again Tony Power I don't know where she gets all her energy from but as well to cut that out Fisher in the five shirt there was the goal scorer early on for Kashmir Technical but it's defensively where she's really made her mark both teams defending brilliantly throughout this game and Hunt's ball cut out, but Kashmir Tech still looked to spark a 
chance here. Guilford, the clever ball through to Phillips out this left hand side now. She'll always be a threat to try and cut in and get a shot on goal. It's a left footed cross into the six yard box and Guilford well, loops it over the bar. That was a good chance. Nicely set up by Phillips and Guilford in great spot on the edge of the box there, but frustrated to send it over the bar. Will tired legs play a part in extra time here? Smith finds power. She can't quite connect up with her winger Diaz. Power again does well. It's up to her name, but then loses out and Phillips tries to link up with Arthur. Mortlock closed down by Seaton and Mortlock's ball cut out by Room. Both teams just not really allowing their opponents much time to turn and run, although here we see Whitaker in a bit of space now for the Royals. Looks up, has support from teammates, including Diaz, but Whitaker can't quite link up with her. It was well cut out. Fisher, bit of time this time, sends it forward, and it's around that halfway line where players aren't getting much space, but all of a sudden Mortlock does get a lot of space on halfway, looks up, finds Guilford, Power does a good job of closing her down and denying a shot, great defending again, but the ball full here, oh, oh it's an awkward one. Very awkward one, and just about out of the way. Offside flag may have gone up there, but gee, you don't want something something like that to uh, be the decider in the in the match. Given all the the quality that, that we've seen on display, you don't want an unfortunate <laughs> deflection or anything like that. Chantel Smith. Puts up and Morrison, is she on side? She gets on the end of that, but Hunt did a great job of closing her down. So many of these players know each other so well and know their strengths and weaknesses. Canard, good composure there. Power again with a bit of space to run into. Ooh. Just about squeezes it through for Seaton and then Morton looks to loop it over to Whitaker. And unfortunately for the Royals, she's again just in an offside position. Loy dropping deep. Links up with Guilford and then Loy getting herself forward and looping it in. Oh, almost an awkward bounce for him, Andrew, but good composure there from the goalkeeper. Oh, Diaz manages to get that under control somehow. Is Whitaker on side this time? The flag doesn't go up. He looks up, nice turn. Rebels surges towards the edge of the box, stays on her feet, looks up. What support has she got? A low ball in, and oh, defense does enough for Kashmir Tech. Oh, ball comes in again, and it's in. Did Eden City Royals, through Chantel Smith, take the lead? I thought that the chance had gone. 
after Middleditch did a good look clearance across the box and Chantel Smith left foot well looped it in it looked like it was exactly what she was trying to do what an effort from a wonderful player just when you uh, need a key player to step up Chantel Smith who won the Maya Jackman Trophy in that 2018 Kate Shepherd Cup final for Dunedin Tech as the outstanding player in that match up against a couple of hugely talented opponents actually. But once again showing her class. But there's still plenty of time for Kashmir Technical to get back into this. But for the first time in the match, they find themselves down. How do the Royals play this now? I'm sure they'd love to find a third goal. And I just don't think they have it in their, have it in their nature to defend. Oh! Another ball coming across there and wasn't far away from, from the goals. Guilford, what can she spark by Kashmir Tech and looks up and has a willing runner here in Evans and well Kennard just does a great job, looks so calm, dealt with it so well. Power closes down Phillips. Diaz, but Loy and Hunt and Hunt getting herself forward, but on oh, Morton, did she do enough? And then just fuck clear by Chantal Smith. <laughs> I think she's apologising for that ball. Might not be coming back in a hurry. She won't care. What a strike by Chantal Smith to give her to Eden City Royal side an edge here over Kashmir Technical. Two one up in extra time. Still plenty of time for more drama here at English Park. Alexander turns. Phillips, what can she spark with all her experience? And she scored some great goals over the years. Just about falls here for Evans, but again, Kennard does a good job of calmly knocking it back towards her goalkeeper. Smith. Tries to beat her opponent, but Arthur's done well. There's a collision there between Broome and Arthur. Arthur's been everywhere today. Been a gutsy effort in the in the middle for Kashmir Technical. Diaz over on the left hand side at the moment and gets back onto it here. Turns and finds Whitaker. Lloyd does a great job of tracking back. Loy once again. And that's easy for Morton though, looks up and 
Great defending by Michaela Hunt. And still going. Finds Mortlock. She looks up and she'll take on Mackay Wright. No, she f passes on to Guilford, who is up against two Royals defenders. And they scramble it away. Season turns. Oh, Morrison just guilty of uh, waiting for the ball there. And Alexander did a great job of intercepting it. Phillips looks up and desperately cleared by Mackay Wright. Diaz doesn't have much support. If you try and take on her marker, she gives it a go, but Arthur and Lloyd do enough. But Diaz still going and finally has a bit of support. Can't quite find Morrison. How much is left in the tank from some of these players? Phillips out to Guildford. Mackay Wright, it's been immense. Morrison closes down. Hunt. And now finds Diaz. Once again, doesn't have a huge amount of support at the moment. Montel Smith, this is the kind of distance where if she gets half a sniff at goal, she'll have a crack, and, but it falls to season. Will she have a crack at goal? Instead, finds Diaz. Will she have a shot? She does from distance, but well wide of goal <laughs> look at the hands on the knees there's not much energy left from some of these players in a huge battle so far Loy classy again How well can the Royals close out a game? They, they don't have to on too many occasions. They've scored 93 goals this season before today and only conceded one. And here they are in a real contest. But they've got the edge at the moment over Kashmir Tech. But late in this first half of extra time, Kashmir Tech will get a set-piece opportunity. What can they do here? Get players forward. Mortlock coming across to help out Arthur, but swung in and dangerously there's oh, a shot on target too, but Emma Andrew again will be quite relieved that it didn't come at her with too much pace. We get into the final minute or two of this first half of extra time. Hashmi Technical desperate to try and get back on even terms. Fisher lays it across to Alexander. I think Maroon will be able to see that one clear just, although Mortlock feels she might have got a corner, but no dice. Will the Royals just slow things down a wee bit now? Probably not, to be honest. Arthur. Links up with Mortlock. Oh, tries to weave it through to Smith, who's gotten herself a long way forward. Mortlock, this time, trying to get it into the six-yard box, but can't do so. Just be slowing things down a wee bit now, Andrew, as the Royals try and get through to the extra time stoppage here break. And there is the whistle from Courtney Bremner. Well, after the scores were locked at 1 all after 90 minutes, it's the Dunedin City Royals who have got the edge 2 1 after the first half of extra time. It was Chantel Smith 
who scored a clever goal six minutes into that first half of extra time. Giving them the edge over Kashmir Technical. We have another 15 minutes of extra time here. Once again, a final chance for coaches Graham Smale for the Royals and Shane Verma for Kashmir Technical to try and spur their team on. Kate Shepherd Cup semi final spot at stake. There'll be some tired legs out there from both teams. Both both teams giving it everything so far. Huge efforts defensively from both teams. As Courtney Bremner blows the whistle to get both teams back out and underway. He's controlled the game really well. There was an early yellow card for Lottie Mortlock for denying a promising attack for the Royals, but other than that, the game has just really been allowed to flow. Both teams playing positive footy. So great work from referee Bremner, and she's assisted today by Alessandro Svazniak, Aidan van der Kroon, and fourth official Simon Myers. They're all doing overtime today as we go into the second half of extra time here at English Park. Kashmir Technical. A goal down. 15 minutes to try and find a leveller against the Dunedin City Royals and Mortlock with an early chance here to take on Morton who's just been superb and closing down her opponent throughout the entire match. <laughs> 20 seconds into this uh, second half and we get another substitution here for Kashmir Tech. And it might have been Lee Alexander, the, the veteran who's gone off and it's forward Jess Dyer, who's been brought on in the 14 shirt, as Tech try and press on here towards the Royals. Dyer's not a bad player to bring on here. She's scored a few goals this season, both in the league, and got a cup goal against Nomads in round two. Kate Loy, who oh, scored that crucial penalty in their round three win over Coastal Spirit. Arthur loses out there to Morton, who, what's Rose Morton doing driving forward? A goal up this late in the match. Showing the intent of the Royals here to I think they'll feel that if they can sneak a third, then that might just about be enough. But <laughs> Kashmir Tech will be throwing everything at them here and driving forward here. Oh, well, wonderful defending there from Tony Power because that looked like it might fall the way of the technical attackers. Chantel Smith. There's room again, defender, but happy to drive forward again. Attack is the best form of defence. Kate Loy's been everywhere and does a great job of winning it back. What a battle. Devin Smith now links up with Loy and Amy Phillips. That's a good ball. Arthur has players forward, including, it might have been uh, Michaela Hunt in a bit of space up there. No, it wasn't, because this is her here. Surging forward. Phillips, he's buzzing around everywhere now, trying to get involved in attack, but 
thumped clear for the Royals. Mortlock. Fisher. Van Hunt sending it out to Smith down this right flank but can't quite keep it in. Not sure that Dunedin uh, City Royals have made a substitution themselves yet. As we're into the 109th minute, bit of pressure there on the Royals and the free kick goes against Chantel Smith there. The Royals can't believe that one, but what it is is a free kick in a very good position for Kashmir Tech. And Mortlock and Arthur are debating over what they're going to do. What can they do here to try and find an equaliser? The second half of extra time. Plenty of players forward. It's Mortlock who's going to send it in. Look at all those yellow shirts at the far post. Mortlock loops it high and curling away. Header came in from Kilford but can't get it on target. Oh, that was a big opportunity for Kashmir Tech there. Couldn't test out Emma Andrew though. Andrew goes long, but Mortlock now with plenty of teammates forward. Arthur loses out to, I think it was Seaton Diaz, looks up. Plenty of yellow shirts again around her. Again, referee allows play to go on, although finally uh, do get a blow of the whistle, and but it might be for a throw-in rather than a free kick. Just dire, strong presence up front. Hunt looks up. Goes long and down the middle, but Morton is everywhere. But Smith able to get on the end of this. She is. Doesn't have a lot of support, but she might have a crack here. Clever touch. Oh, and flicks it across Morrison. Both teams slugging it out here. Alia Roon looks up, sees Morrison in a lot of space. Doesn't take that option, though. Emily Morrison can't quite believe that she didn't get the ball and seemed to be in acres of space. Right on the edge of the box, but... Mortlock. Hacked clear by Mackay Wright. Oh, power going for another interception. And, well, it does enough. Can the Royals see this out? They're 2-1 up over Kashmir Technical. We're throwing everything at them here in the second half of extra time. And it might be a handball there against Chantal Smith. Mortlock takes it quickly, but too quickly for the referee's liking. And the Royals won't mind things just getting slowed down a wee bit again here. But it gives Tech a chance to get the big guns forward. Surprised we don't see Michaela Hunt up to get her head on the end of it. But instead she sends in a cross and but a head of tennis. Whitaker thumps it clear. Michaela Hunt, of course, scored two brilliant headers for the Needham Tech in that 2018 Kate Shepherd Cup final. Oh, 
Kate Loy loses out to Morton, who's just been phenomenal today. And now Smith again. It's been great. She's happy just to whack it forward. And Kashmir and Tech will just have to start all over again and deep in their own half. Players from both teams out on their feet here. But look, Emily Morrison still trying to shut down middle ditch and goals. Bit of space now. It's the clock winds down. We're about midway through this second half of extra time at English Park. It's going to be a stoppage. Oh, it might just be cramp as much as anything for Tony Power. She's all right. She gets up. Although she's gone down after taking the throw, I think she's cramped up pretty badly there. Just sums up the, the effort from uh, herself and like players from both teams today. The huge match. Whitaker. Happy to get that forward. Once again, Kashmir Tech just have to build up from the back. Again, the Royals don't know how to just sit back though, so they're still pressing their opponents. Now Hunt has a bit of space to drive forward into and has a bit of support now as well from Guilford, but is that Mackay right again? Been everywhere. So is Mortlock. She's all the way back towards her own penalty area to get back onto that and try and spark another attack. Oh, Morrison does enough to help win a throw. We're finally going to see a substitution for the Royals, and probably an enforced one, really, with power. Struggling with, with cramp there after putting in a huge shift. And I think it's a youngster, Freya Partridge Moore, who's come on in her place in the 17 shirt. <laughs> oh, heavy touch. And There's a real intensity to the final few minutes here. Fisher sends it across to Hunt. <laughs> Look at Morrison still closing her down and then Chantel Smith having a crack from just about halfway. Why not? They're just happy to see the ball down that end of the pitch. Middle ditch goes long. Morton again battling away in the middle of the park. Here's Devin Smith. Yellow shirt surging forward, but it's gone to Morrison. And what do the Royals do here? Diaz drives forward. Morrison will get that in a bit of space. No support. Will she take on her opponent? She will. Looks up with a shot and falls for Diaz, who gets a shot in. Diaz scores the second. The Royals 3 1 up. Deep in the second half of extra time here in this Cape Shepherd Cup quarter final. And that might just be enough. And look at the effort here. Morrison taking on her opponents. The shot was deflected, but yes, how she tucked that away so well. Wow. Will that be enough? Dunedin City Royals now 3-1 up over Kashmir Technical. Look at the yellow shirt surging forward here. Last gasp saloon for the tech side. They've been huge today as well. Both teams have been phenomenal. Don't really deserve to see a loser, but the Royals seemingly doing enough when it matters. An injury time, an extra time. Hunt goes long. Dyer, 
touch was just a wee bit heavy and it's thumped clear again by the Royal Chantel Smith. Once again, big challenges there. Always going after the ball. She's thumped at another heavy, heavy contest. It's just been that kind of game. Arthur has been huge in that physical battle in the middle of the park as well. That was just two players competing for the ball. It looks like it will fall the way of for a drop ball for Kashmir Tech. They send it forward. And Mortlock, well, room does enough. She's been good today. Who hasn't been good? It falls for Devon Smith here and links up with Dyer. And seen over the line there by Kennard. Once again, just showing her composure <laughs> for a goal kick. And look at Mortlock. Still got the energy to hunt down the ball to try and speed things up here but we're into the final minute or so of extra time the Royals trying to see out the final moments here Deck will continue to throw everything at them Dyer blocked by Kennard Hunt has to go all the way back and look at Morrison still closing her down. Nothing, nothing like parking the bus here. Ashmere Tech, last chance to try and pull off the impossible here into the final seconds of the match. Referee Courtney Brenner looks at her watch. Room puts it out. They're just waiting for that final whistle. I think there'll be a few players collapse, collapse to the turf after the final whistle goes because it's been a huge effort from both teams. Dyer trying to link up with Arthur, but a few Royals players thought that might have been the final whistle. We're not quite there yet. But seems like everything but is uh, they'll have a free kick in the closing moments here. What a game it's been. Canard. Not to go long. Is there a chance for a consolation here for Kashmir Tech? Kate Law has been superb, but what about Morrison once again, closing down her opponent? The energy on display here is sickening from both teams. Nakai Wright, her composure again. They're wondering where this final whistle is. And there it goes from Courtney Bremner. There's an Eden City Royals celebrate. They've won this Kate Shepard Cup quarter-final clash, 3-1 over a valiant Kashmir Technical. What a game it's been. What a game. Kashmir Tech took an early lead as we watch the replay here. Arthur sent it in, and Lily Fisher put it in from just a couple of yards out. But midway through that first half, Chantel Smith looped it across and it came back towards Diaz, who finished superbly. The second goal here came as the ball came out to Chantel Smith. This was an extra time and looped it into the far post, leaving Middle Ditch in the Kashmir Tech defence with no chance. And then very late on, Morrison running at the defenders and Diaz again from outside the box this time. Again, leaving Middle Ditch with no chance and sealing a 3-1 win for the Dunedin City Royals there in the Kate Shepherd Cup semi-finals, along with Palmerston North Maris, Northern Rovers and Auckland United. Kashmir Tech, they've been huge today. They'll be, they'll be gutted, but, well, it's going to be exciting to see these teams and Coastal Spirit, Rosemary Carey go up against each other 
in over the coming weeks in the South Island League. But thank you for joining us. Hope you've enjoyed the coverage today. And make sure you keep tuning in to matches being streamed every week on New Zealand Football's YouTube channel. From myself, Morgan Jarvis, and everyone else bringing you this broadcast, thank you and farewell from English Park in Christchurch. <laughs>